Look at how cute you are. Hello. This is a workshop update. <laughs> I made um, a new rack for my pliers um, with more space and I thought I could make the hole slightly bigger with my router but it turns out that the router bit is exactly the same size as the old one so they don't quite fit so I need to get a press drill so that I can do perfectly straight down drill holes and get a slightly bigger drill bit to make these holes wide enough. One of them, one pair fits. Um, I can use this pair. It fits so well that it gets stuck. Yeah. And it gets hard to get it back out again. But the rest of them, some of them, just spring their way out. Because <laughs> they're, they're so well sprung that they just ping out, which is a pain. This is my enameling stuff, so I can now do enamel jewellery. This is where my wooden, uh, my woodworking bench is going to go when I built it. And also when all of this tool, these tools have been sold. <laughs> this is where I'm storing my tools at the moment. Uh, scooters over here, some bikes. And this is where I'm storing my gardening equipment for growing veggies. This is for the bench, so that's going to be the worktop. So there's Keith's freezer. This is the pit. That's a bin. Um, yeah, this is the pit. Nicely covered now. My brother cut the wood with his saw. So that this is all nice and safe to walk on now. And I'm building a bin. I haven't got the bottom on at the moment. And it's just clamped together with glue. And then this is my pottery station. So I've got some shelves. This is a pin board. It's going to go up here so that I can hang my clamps and other tools. I've got these little boxes to put all my tools in. Some of these tools I made myself. I made this one. I did that when I was doing my degree. And I made this one. I've got these different shapes. Shaping the clay. Uh, I think I made that one as well. <laughs> so it's a wire loop tool. The, these long planks here are going to be the legs of my bench. Those planks are going to be a fence like that. This side, my brother's going to build that for us. Hopefully tomorrow, um, which will be Wednesday, because you'll be seeing this Sunday. We have a fence. It's all done. going to make some jewellery. So I thought I'd show what I'm doing today as a vlog. <laughs> so I don't vlog enough and I um, I would like to vlog more but I kind of find that what I'm doing must be quite boring and nobody's really interested. Today you're gonna see what I do. Good stuff. This is my bits and bobs thing. This has got lots of um, bits. <laughs> uh, it's all sterling silver. There's a, a little bit of um, gold in there. A bit bits that I can melt down. And there's a few bits of rose gold in there. I've got ear wires and end caps, clasps and pins for earring studs. Beads and components, jump rings. This is 
a box chain bracelet that I haven't soldered yet, so I've made it. I just haven't soldered it yet. That'll be for sale. This is a scrap that might get used, but probably won't. <laughs> this is partially made things, so I've got a waffle in there, flower ring. I'm going to be working on this today. I just need to finish polishing it up and set the stone inside. This is scrap to be melted down. These are finished pieces. I'm going to attempt a men's ring. I've only made two men's rings before. I'm not entirely certain on the sizes. <laughs> so this is my ring mandrel. So I've got my size and I've got a little piece of tape to mark the size off. And I've got some quite thick silver. This is 1.2 mil thick and it's 6 mil wide. This is a rawhide mallet. It's nice and soft so it doesn't mark the silver. So I'm just kind of gauging whereabouts I think it's going to fall when both sides are flat. So I think about here. I'm just going to use my saw to cut this off. This is a piercing saw, so it's got a very fine blade. After you've sawn metal, there's always a burr. I don't know how well you can see it on the bottom edge there. Right, so I'm almost there. I just need to get them to overlap properly. No idea how interesting or entertaining this video is going to be. <laughs> Just making a really simple ring, but I'm going to play around with some liver of sulfur, which turns silver black. Um, and then I will I'll be texturing a surface. So the liver of sulfur will sit into the surface of the into the grooves of the metal, and then I'll polish the top so it's nice and shiny, so the black will stand out. And it will be for sale on my website. That's better. It's nice and smooth. It's lined up that way. Lined up that way. So I've got some solder paste on the join. I'm just finishing up this ring. I just did the boring task of filing any scratches off. And now I'm going to polish the inside up using my pendant drill, which is this guy here. This is rouge compound, which is used for polishing silver and gold. This is a ocean jasper. This is a bezel pusher. I actually made this one myself. This has got a flat bottom um, and no corners. All the corners have been rounded off. And I turn the hand as well. It's a bit filthy now, but it <laughs> does its job. So you work opposite corners so that you don't end up pushing the stone over to one side so I'll do this side and then I'll turn it around and I'll do this side so I've done that a little bit and then I'll rotate it round to the other side make sure the stone is still down sorry you won't be able to see anything I'm doing right now checking the stone doesn't move and it doesn't it's not rotating which is good There's the ring on his little setting. My finger is a size O and this is a finger it fits, so this is an O. Checked it to make sure there isn't any gaps in the solder and then I can make it round. So I've got it on my mandrel, my rawhide hammer. Because it's tapered you have to keep rotating it otherwise you'll end up with it um, instead of being parallel on the sides you'll end up with a sort of cone shape especially with a ring so a band so wide ring started again it's got a little way to go i've polished up the inside and i've stamped it with a 925 stamp because this is sterling silver uh, I haven't polished the outside yet because 
it's uh, going to get texturized and I haven't done the final polish on the inside. But now I'm going to use this hammer, which makes a texture that looks like tree bark. Sorry about my grubby fingers, it's polish. Don't know whether you can see that texture. But I'm going to make it stand out a lot more by using a liver of sulphur, which will add a black patina to silver. I have a jar of liver of sulphur. It smells like rotten eggs. And the water is warm. It was hot, but it's cooled down a bit since I first used it. I used it on these um, stud earrings. You can barely see. But there's little dimples and they're black inside. I'm just going to plonk this in here and uh, let that blacken for a while. Oh, it smells. I can already see it's turning a goldy colour. That's pretty cool. Um, and then you can see the black on the inside. Got some purples in there. Purples and blues. That's really pretty. So I've just washed it in some cold water. I don't know how well you can see the colours. Quickly before my battery runs out, I'm going to apply some lacquer. This will protect the patina, which is in the grooves of my bark ring. And I've got a brush, hopefully it'll fit. Oh, <laughs> you won't fit. It doesn't fit in my bottle. I have to tilt the end of it. This has a 10 minute drying time. Sorry about my dirty fingers. This is the finished bark ring. It's not the best lighting to see the colour inside the grooves, but it is there. It's a nice chunky ring. And I've just made this one, which is bigger than that one. Uh, that's rectangle wire. This is D-shaped wire, so it's got a slight curve to it. It's got the same texture. It kind of looks like a tyre, this one. So this one is a size S and a half, and this is a U. Here's the Jasper ring, ocean jasper. The stone's so pretty. State of my nails. <laughs> I've got a turquoise in a tab setting ring. Um, this is a pendant and it, the stone is labradorite. So pretty. This is my twin ring and that's a sapphire. This is a water cast ring. So I took molten silver, melted it into cold water, and you end up with these shapes. And I've put white enamel in there. And it looks a bit like an oyster. This is the heart ring set. It says rose gold set in sterling silver. And you can wear them together or individually. In one of my previous videos, I made a rose gold and silver charm bracelet. And I've got two more of those available. Two slightly different sizes. So the rings are rose gold and the clasps rose gold and the rest is sterling silver. And there's two. So this is what I'm working on at the moment. I just need to do the final polish and then decide what stone's going in there. All of these are on my website, ready for sale. I also made some earrings. So they're studs and they'll hang down over your earlobe. So these are two part studs. The big loop sits behind your lobe and then the half loop sits in front of your lobe. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and if you'd like to see more of me making things and uh, maybe some pottery or playing the piano with a key maybe, then subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our videos.